Welcome CSE 121, Programming 1. We're going to go over a quick exercise on list methods and string methods using baseball text. This one is a little more relevant because we're kind of searching through text and we're finding things through text. So it's kind of a small sample of something you do on a bigger scale. So it seems a little more relevant. So I thought it'd be more interesting. So in my Warren, this is exercise 20 called baseball text. And if you go to documents and resources, there's a PDF here that you can look at and I'm going to open it up as well. So I'll open it up in a tab here and I'll go through this and then also we're going to want to use the W3Schools Python tutorial on Python strings. If you go and look for Python strings and then you go to string methods, we're going to use some of these string methods that are in here. So we're going to use that as our resource. So first of all, going back to this, let's check out the instructions here. We're going to go into Replit and make a new repel called 20 Baseball Text and then we're going to search something called Baseball Ipsum and we're just going to get a paragraph and use that. It's kind of like a dummy text generator. And we're going to make it a variable called BB text. And then we're going to go through some methods of counting the words by first counting the spaces. And then we're going to add one to the spaces to count the words. Then we're going to use the count method. And then we're also going to use a split method. So we're going to try a couple things here just to explore some of these methods a little bit. And when I say methods, sometimes they're literal methods, sometimes they're the operations or the strategies is what I'm talking about. So we'll go to repel and go in your repels, go in your CSC 121 and make a new repel. And it's not with turtle, it's just regular Python and just call it 20 baseball text. And you could put your last name, first initial on it and just hit create repel. And you don't need to have anything over here. So I'm going to close up the text here. And what you're going to do first is you're going to go into a new tab and just search Baseball Ibsen. Baseball, and it should be the first thing that comes up. So just click there. And here it is. And it says five paragraphs. We don't need five paragraphs. We just need one. So we're going to put in a one here. And it makes a random one each time. So everybody will get a different one. So it won't be the same one. So just hit Play Ball. And here's our paragraph. Then just highlight the paragraph and go back to Replit and paste it. Give it a variable name. So in here it says to give it a variable name BB text, BB for baseball. So we'll go here and call it BB text and then equals and then everything else we're just going to put in quotes so it's a string. So you could highlight the whole thing and just put your quotes on it so it's one big string and all those lines should go away. So we just have one big string right with multiple words. And what we want to do is count these words. Now you could physically count the words if you want to, but another way to count the words, at least from what we know, we don't know how to count the words yet. But what we do know how to count are certain elements like spaces. So we could do that first. So we'll use that as one of our first methods. We'll count the spaces. And we'll use an older method. Before the count method, we'll use a method where we just count the spaces. We just loop through it and count the spaces using a counter. So let's try that first. We're going to use something that we used earlier in the semester. We'll use a counter. So we could just call our counter spaces instead of counter or something like that because that'll make more sense. So we'll start it at zero. Then we'll just do a loop and we'll say for i in bb text and we could loop through text. So we can loop through a string like that and we can look for certain things. Now we can look for letters, we could look for anything, but we can't look for words because it doesn't really know what words are, but we can look for spaces. So what we're going to do is we're going to look for spaces. So we can say if we can use a condition. So as we cycle through here, as it goes through all these letters, when it comes across a space, we're going to say if i equals equals a space. Now a space is just an empty string except with a space in there. So we're going to use that. So when we encounter a space, we're basically going to count it. So we're going to say spaces plus or equals one. So we're going to add to it. And we have a red wavy line here. And what did I forget? I forgot to say if i. I don't have what the condition is. So I have to say if i equals to the space. So as i iterates through this, we can use i as an iterator. As it goes through there, when it comes across a space, it's going to count it. And then let's just count our spaces. I'm going to go here and kind of go back to the margin here. And we could just print out spaces. I'll just print out spaces. And you could just print out spaces like this. Or you can put a string right in front of it. I'm going to put spaces. And you could just use the comma method like that. That should work out okay. So we could just count the spaces. And by counting the spaces, we should have an idea of how many words we have. That's kind of a way to work backwards. So let's try that out first. So that's all we're doing first is we're counting spaces in this block here. And we come up with 64.
Now, if you figure out how many words there are, figure there's a word and a space. If we have 64 spaces, how many words were there, would there be? And there would probably be one more word because it looks like we have a word and a space, word and a space up to the end, and then there's an extra word. So words would probably be one more than the spaces since there's not a space after the word. Now, again, there's a lot of things we're not taking into account here. What happens with the periods? What happens with commas and things like that that are in there? Does it count that? Well, it's only counting spaces now, so that's all we have to worry about. But if we wanted to count words, we're just using spaces and adding one. So you could do something like this. You could say print, and we could just put a string that says words like that, and a comma, and then a comma, and then just spaces plus one. And we could just do that. So that would give us an idea. So if we run this, now we got spaces 64, words 65. And if we counted them, I think we'd be okay with that. It's not counting characters like periods, but that's one way to do it. So that's kind of the old fashioned way or an older way. And it's a little more work to do that. Now there's an easier way. We have a count method. Now if we go to our string methods and we look for count, it says returns the number of times a specified value occurs in a string. Well, that's a good way to count spaces. It's shorter than making a counter and looping and doing all that. If it can just do that, why not just do that? So that's another method that we can do. So if we go back here, we could try that. And I'm just gonna, so I'm just gonna put a space here and we're gonna try this second method. Again, let's look at this. Let's look at how it works, count. Now we've used this before, I think, and we just use the string dot count and then whatever we're counting. So we're gonna do that. And we don't need a variable right now. We could just print out anything that we need. So let's try to do that. So we're going to count the spaces that are in that text. So we'll do this. We'll just print BB text because that's our string name and dot and then we're going to use the count method. Then in parentheses, this thing is annoying. We should make this go away. And then in parentheses here, what are we going to count? We're going to count a space. And we're going to do that. So it should just print out the number of spaces in that text. And let's see if it works. And that works. And even if you wanted to make it look nicer, you could say spaces like that and highlight the whole thing and quote it. And then make sure you put a comma in between so that you're kind of separating your string from whatever this is, which is actually just a, a method or a value that's going to get printed out. And if we do that, that works. And if you wanted to try it again, just like we did before, because again, we're still not counting words. We could put it words in here and we could do the same thing except just put plus one after here. We could throw it all inside here. I don't always like to put things inside print parentheses. A lot of times it's better to make variables and then print them out, but this will work. It's two lines of code versus one, two, three, four, five, six lines of code. And that works. We're getting the same results, so it's working. And another thing we can do if we go back to our PDF is we can count words. So far we've been counting spaces, but that's not that accurate, but we can count words. Now, one way to count words is actually to split a string into a list, and there's a split method. And we have that in here. If we go back to our methods, they should have a split method, and there it is, and it says splits the string at the specified separator and returns a list. So we're gonna get a list back, and all the words will be separate items in the list. Now let's just take a look at it. and couple things just to note it says you can specify the separator but the default set doesn't say but but the default separator is any white space so when it comes to a space it's going to use that as a separator so it's actually going to ignore periods and commas or anything that might be in there so let's try that out that's another method and it's the split method now we're splitting a string into a list so we have to actually make a new list and this thing will be the list so here they're using x is going to be a list so let's just look at this thing before we do anything uh, when you run it here it looks like it already is run because i was seeing something here i don't know why these things take so long but here it has you have text welcome to the jungle and then x represents text.split so the new list is x and that's what it looks like so it's a list with four elements in it, and it basically splits up where the spaces are, and it puts each element in the list. And they have index numbers. That's 0, 1, 2, 3. So we're going to use that. So we'll use that method. And I'll close this little tryout thing, and I'll go back in case we need to go to the other 
list methods that are in here, which there's lots of them. So first what we're gonna do is we're gonna split it and we're gonna call it BB list. So our new list will be called BB list because we had BB text, this is BB list. So BB list is basically gonna be equal to, now this is a method, so probably what we have to do is put the text dot split. So we'll do BB text dot split. So if you're ever not sure, like if you're thinking, well, should it be split? and then you know something in there well usually if it's a method and we just looked in string methods you usually put the string before it so it's bb text dot split and we don't have to put anything in here although i think you can put other separators in there but by default it's just going to use a space it's going to split it at a space so this list that gets returned is going to be split so you could print the list and just see what it looks like and just print out bb list and just run it out so there's the original spaces and words that we count it and now here's the list so you can see what it's doing now that doesn't help us what we actually want to do is we want to count the items in the list now we know how to do that because we can do print and we could do len remember the length method it means the length of the list and it's len and it's a actually not a method it's a function that's why we don't use bblist.len it's actually a built-in function like print so we're just going to put len and then put the list inside the parentheses and put bblist and what that'll print out is the length of that list that should be all the words and notice that when you have periods there's a period by short stop see that's part of the word so it considers the period part of the word it only looks at white spaces so if there's any punctuation it, it adds it to the word so it doesn't count that which is good because we're counting words here so let's print it out and see how accurate this is when we count the words this way and 65 and that was pretty good so i don't know if it always is going to work out that way again what we did here is we took a large string and we split it up into a list and then just counted it now let's say we want to find something in there we actually have ways to find things within a list I have an example here here's a way to just go through it now you could use I and in the how to think like a computer scientist book they like to say for word in it that makes more sense than just using I all the time but it doesn't matter if you use I the iterator or if you use a new kind of variable name like word or something like that and all we're gonna do is just look for something in the list and it, obviously it'll be something baseball related let's look for something where it has ball in it because probably ball is in there more than once or somewhere or I think it'll come up with the first place to do it so let's just look for ball in there I'm gonna do for I in BB list so we're gonna go through the list we're gonna use another kind of operator called in to see if it's in it so we're gonna say if and we're not gonna say if I in the list we're actually gonna say if the word so whatever word we're looking for so let's look for ball or something so we're gonna say ball and it could be a fragment as well so we're going to say if ball in i and that's why it's sometimes better to say word or something because it, you're cycling through words because i doesn't always mean that to you we can use that we can start off with i if you want to change it now for i and bb list if ball is in i we can just kind of print it out and we'd print out i so let's print out i and just see what happens we're just obviously we can see the list but let's say we know it's about baseball we just want to say is, is ball in there and let's just see what happens and it found two words it found ball and baseball and there's ball and there's baseball somewhere else now one thing you can do also is let's say this was a lot of data not just a paragraph of 65 words let's say it was thousands of words and you needed to find it how would you find something in there if you just saw that and you'd be like oh it says ball and baseball was in there now we have to go look for it well one thing we can do is use another method called the index method where at least you could find where it is in the list there's an index method and let's check that out one last thing here We'll go to the index method. It says searches for a string for a specified value and returns the position of where it was found. So we can also find their index positions in here. So we could look at this and it's just a method. So it's the list dot index. And you could also use string because this is just string here, but we could also use list too because list and strings have index. Because remember in a string, the index is starting there using zero, one, two, three, and the same thing with a list. So a list also has index numbers. So we're gonna do that. So it works the same way. So we're gonna use that method index and we're gonna search for the index of the certain words that we find. And, and again, what I'm saying is, let's say this was really long and you were like, I don't know where ball is. I don't know where baseball is. And since we found these words, let's just see if we could find their index number. 
So we could say print, we'll just use print statements here. And then inside here, we'll just use bblist.index, that's the method. And what we'll look for is the index number of, first of all, of ball, because we found that. And then we could also do the one for baseball. We could find that one too, because we, we came up with these two when we ran through it. Now, there's also a way we can use I and do it all at one time, but we'll just do it like that, just since we, we already printed out what they are, so we know what they are. So now we just want to find their index numbers. So let's see what they come up with. And we got 1 and 18. And is that right? Ball is at 1? Yes, because Yankees is 0 and ball would be 1. And then 18, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 16, 17, 18. I probably counted wrong but <laughs> because eight because baseball's right there, so I probably counted wrong. So, so that sounds right. So we're also able to find the index position of something in a list. So all I'm introducing here is just different ways to start pouring through text and start going through data and finding things and searching things and even breaking things down, taking text, breaking it down into a list and splitting them up and things like that, using spaces, just to try and be more of a computer scientist to start digging through data a little bit. That's obviously what you're going to want to start to do, especially with something like Python, is digging through stuff, digging through data, digging through text, whatever it may be. It could be numbers, but we're just doing that and we're using a couple ways to do that. And we'll continue this exercise just a little bit more in part two.